Hi guys, my name is Teresa. Welcome to my channel. Today I am doing the end of year book tag. So you guys, this video is a little different than my other videos. My computer is broken. Uh, I am still in the process of trying to get it fixed. I have posted about it, so in case, but in case you're new to this channel, you haven't seen it before, my computer overheated and fried my hard drive. So, <laughs> fun for me. Uh, yeah, it's a real bummer. But what that means is I am using my phone to edit. So this is going to be not going to have a lot of stuff. Like you notice there was no intro. There will be no outro. Like the fancy screen, you know, because that's on my computer, which I can't access right now. And I don't feel like trying to learn a whole new system on my phone for just a couple, you know, videos. Uh, so this is going to be very minimal editing, unfortunately, but it is what it is. At least I am able to get a video out. I don't know who started this tag, so I'm sorry. I've seen a ton of people doing it. No idea where it originated from, but this is the end of your book tag. So question, oh, by the way, it is November 10th today, so just... Whenever this goes up, I don't know, but that way you kind of have a little bit of an idea of, you know, my timeline here and what I'm working with. So it's November 10th. All right, uh, question number one. Are there any books that you started this year that you need to finish? Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot. I, for some reason, have just been picking up books and putting them down and not finishing them. And I don't know why. I just have been having difficulty with that this year. I've read so many freaking books this year. Maybe that's why, because I've read so many books. I've read more books this year than I've probably ever read in a year, ever. <laughs> it's insane. But I do have some that like I just put down and they're not DNFs. I guess you could say they were soft DNFs because I put them down and with the, the expectation of picking them back up again, and then never did. So let's go over a list, shall we? So this first one, honestly, I don't remember if I started it this year or last year. That's how bad it is. If I did start it this year, it would have been like early this year. Um, and that's A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. So as you guys can see, I have this much left of the book to go. Like this, I've already read. So there's my bookmark. I don't have much left at all. I mean, I don't even know if it's like a hundred pages that I have left, but for some reason, I just set this down. I started reading something else. I never picked it back up again, which I don't know why, because I was really enjoying this book. But yeah, so this is one that I would like to finish because I'm almost done with it. Like I might as well just get through it. Uh, then we have Obsidio. Which again, I am, let me see where my bookmark is. I have, I'm at here. So I have this much left to finish. So that's about half, I'm about halfway, halfway through the book. Another one I, no, this one actually I know why. It's because my audiobook ran out from the library and I was reading along while listening to the audiobook. Honestly, if you're gonna read the Illuminae Files, that's like the only way to do it, I think, because I don't think you're going to get the full experience by reading just one or the other. You got to read them both together if you can. So yeah, my audiobook ran out and I have gotten the audiobook back since then. I just still haven't picked it up. Why? I don't know. That's going to be the theme. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's just what it is. It's just what has happened. Um, then we have Arula's Aurora's, Aruilla's, I can never say this word. Colors by Jeffrey Overstreet. By the way, Asidio is by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. It's book three in the Illuminate Files. So here's another one. Halfway through, I'm good at getting like halfway through the book and then putting it down. Um, this one though, I know because I was reading this physically. For those of you who are new to this channel or new to me, are unaware I have a disability 
Um, I have chronic illness and unfortunately it does affect my cognitive functioning. I don't have like a diagnosis for cognitive issues. I just know I have difficulty reading physically. It's just as what it is. So majority, if you do watch my channel, pretty much everything I read is audiobook. Again, because of said disability. This one doesn't have an audiobook, so I, well, I can read physically. Like, I'm not incapable of reading physically. It just takes a really long time for me to be able to comprehend. And this one, I just in re like was rereading it and rereading it, and I'm like, the same sentence over and over, the same paragraph over and over, and I'm like, I don't know why. I don't know if it's my disability, if it's the book, if it's both. But I'm just having a really difficult time with this. Like, the story's super interesting. I just can't. I just can't get into it and the way that they're the it's worded is kind of weird too like there's some people in here that kind of talk in a a different way and it just messes with my head <laughs> so yeah i should probably tell you what these books are about maybe good girl's guide to murder about a girl named pip who does her senior project on a murder suicide in her town that she believes was not actually a murder suicide so that's what that one's about. Obsidio is, like I said, book three, Illuminate Files, sci-fi stuff. This one is a Christian fantasy. Um, this is about a girl who I guess can use colors. And like in this world, colors are forbidden unless you're in the palace. Um, there's like royalty stuff going on here. There's, I don't know, it's interesting. So that's, <laughs> that's that one. Okay, and then we have, and this one I'm really sad about, and I don't know why I, I have not picked this up yet. Potiphar's Wife by Maceo Andrews. Maceo Andrews is legitimately probably one of my favorite authors. Like this book will probably like solidify whether she is or not because this is the third book I read by her. And I'm only that far in. Actually, I, I, might, I might be a little bit farther in because I was listening to the audiobook as well. But it doesn't matter because I haven't finished it yet. And I'm loving this book. I just have not picked it up. I think because I know how the story kind of ends. Um, this is biblical fiction and it's about Zuliaka who is Potiphar's wife. Potiphar was Pharaoh's bodyguard. Uh, real life people from history um, this is a retelling, not a retelling, but like a reimagining, I guess, or telling from her point of view, from Potiphar's wife's point of view. I'm loving it, but so far I'm loving her as a character and I'm like, how, like this is gonna end. I know how it's gonna end and I know it's gonna break my heart and I'm just like, I don't want it. To, I think that's, I don't want it to end. I don't want her to become the bad guy. So that is why I am putting this off or I think why I haven't continued reading it because I was really really enjoying it and it's a series there's a there's a um there's, it's a duology so I really need to read that because the second came out this year <sighs> I, it is what it is guys I don't know and the last one <laughs> that I have that I really need to finish because I started this year is Downrange Taylor Adams. This is, let's see, this one I have not gotten very far into. Only like chapter six. Um, this one is a military western type. It's about a DEA agent who just came back from Afghanistan after witnessing some pretty horrific stuff over there. He comes home to his small town in Texas to find out that Basically, the town is being overrun by drug lords. But it says, unfortunately for the crew of criminals, Garrett Cole, besides being an elite undercover officer for the DEA, is a battle-hardened Green Beret who has spent part of his career, the better part of his career, hunting terrorists. So he is going to go and save his town. Which, I love Western movies. Never read a rest Western book. And this one was just another one that I was like, it, it was kind of slow, so I put it down and I just haven't picked it up. What am I gonna do with it? I don't know, will I finish it? I hope so. <sighs> it's just like, it's been a crazy year, you guys. It's been a crazy year. Okay, let's move on. Question two, right? Do you have an Atemel book 
to transition into the end of the year with. Yes. Well, I would say I have a lot of those because I read a lot of thrillers. I read a lot of murder mysteries and I feel like those are really like, you know, good for that. But there was one I actually just read. Um, I finished it on the 1st of November. So I felt like that was really good of like going from fall into winter, even though winter is not till like mid-December. But anyways, it's Lost in Darkness by Michelle Gripe. This is book one in the Of Monsters and Men series. This is a Christian historical fantasy, like his, no, not fantasy, just historical romance. Now y'all know I'm not a romance reader, right? And I think I, I think I rated this like a four star. This is basically a reimagining of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And I really, really liked it. It takes place in England in 1815. So Regency era, is it Regency era? Am I completely wrong there? Anyways, 1815 England. Uh, you have an author, this woman who is a travel writer and she wants to go to Egypt but she ends, her father dies and she ends up having to help take care of her brother who has um, a disformity, a medical condition that causes a disformity. And then she meets up with this uh, former Navy surgeon who um, partners with a doctor who is said to cure her brother, but the surgeon thinks there might be some um, things that aren't quite so above board. And she happens to be neighbors with Mary Shelley. So you can kind of, it's like, this is kind of like where Mary Shelley got her inspiration for Frankenstein. It's basically what this book is toted as. So this one I thought was great. It, it took place in like the fall, winter time. And then the next in the series is about Dracula. So excited, excited. I think these books are great for a transitioning type of story. Okay. Number three, is there a new release you are still waiting for? To, as far as I know, no. There's, I mean, I'm sure there are books that are coming out in November and December that I am excited for, that I want to read. But the main ones I was really excited for this year have already come out. So yeah, I don't, I don't have, it's just no. There's, to my knowledge, unless something pops up that like I was unaware of, no, not really. Okay, question four what three books do you want to read before the end of the year? Obviously all of the ones that have already started and need to finish those for sure. But if we're just talking outside of that, books I haven't talked about yet, books that I would like to finish before the year is up um, or read before the year is up. This one is one of them, Nefarious, the Nef A <laughs> Nefarious Plot by Steve Deuce, Deuce? Uh, I actually watched the movie that was based off this book. So the movie is supposed to have been the prequel to the book or like how, cause this is, okay. <laughs> this is supposed to be a, a manuscript written by a demon on how they are controlling and taking over the American government. Uh, very interesting. And the book was supposedly how the, the movie was how the manuscript the manuscript was found, how this book was written. This book is actually featured in the movie. It's pretty great. It's it's awesome. I loved it. It was very scary. Oh, very terrifying. It's Christian fiction, uh, Christian movie, but like, yeah, demonic, creepy stuff. So that's what this is. I would really like to read this. Um, I've heard this is kind of being toted as uh, like a modern day screw tape letters. So excited. I would like to get this finished this year since I read since I watched the movie a couple months ago you know it just makes sense to read the book and the other two books you'll see I kind of have a wide range of stuff um the next one is Inheriting Clutter by Julie Hall this is how to calm the chaos your parents leave behind now this is on my um, 23 books read in 23 2023 I failed miserably at that. <laughs> but this is one that I still would really like to read. It's a nonfiction all about, you know, just dealing with parents' stuff when they pass away. Um, my parents are thankfully still with me, but my grandma, um, my grandpa, my grandparents recently passed. 
and my my mom and her siblings kind of had to deal with the clutter <laughs> and my my dad am, is for sure a I would say borderline hoarder like he's not like what you would see on the tv show but he has a lot of stuff just a lot of stuff and I myself have tendencies to want to keep a lot of stuff <laughs> and so I'm like ah yeah we need to work on that I know we want to be a minimalist that has never been a desire of mine but I don't want to have a super cluttered home either so I'm hoping by reading this it'll kind of help me through that also um I'm still very much grieving it's coming up on the one year anniversary of my grandma's passing and then we had to have the estate sale for the home and that was like in April so it's you know it was it was still pretty recent so I'm hoping this will kind of help me work through some of my emotions and I'm very very interested to see what this says I'd like to get it read this year if possible okay and the last one that I want to read this year and I've been kind of waiting until November December because it seems more fitting is These Silent Woods by Kimmy Cunningham Grant like guys I want to live here <laughs> Like if like down below was all farmland and then up here is all woods, that is my, like if I could create my ideal scenario where I would live, that would be it. I'd live here, we'd have woods, mountains behind me, and farmland out in front of me. That's like my dream, okay? Anyways, this one was recommended to me by my good friend Nala from Here There Be Stories. I will link her channel down below. You guys should go check her out, she's great. Um, but this one was recommended to me because we read a book, we read, yeah, a book, um, and watched the movie that was based off the book called My Abandonment, um, by Peter Rock. It actually took place, it was, it was based on a true story that took place here in Portland, Oregon, where I live, about a man and his daughter who were living in the park, the like forest park, for years without being detected. And they basically disappeared one day. And so this, like, after they were found, they disappeared again. So that was, like, their story. And the movie is way better than the book. I don't recommend the book. Ugh. The movie, though, um, Leave No Trace, was amazing. I recommend you watch it. But she said this one really reminded her of that. It gave her the same kind of vibes. Uh, this is... It's, like, a man and his daughter live in isolation in a remote cabin in the Appalachian woods. And I don't want to know any more than that. She said it's very much isolation thriller. Um, they are like major homesteading. I mean, no electricity, no family, no connection to the outside world. And he is hiding or running from something, but what that is, I don't know. So I'm excited to find out. So this one is definitely one I want to read because Nala, it's one of Nala's favorites and she's been like, you need to read it. <laughs> Uh, plus, it just feels fall, winter to me. So now is the perfect time to pick it up. Okay, we got two more questions left. Question number five. Is there any book you think could shock you and become a favorite? I mean, possibly These Silent Woods. Uh, this definitely could. Um, would it be the favorite of the year? Maybe. I mean, this is definitely a possibility. Other than that, the only ones I could think of were, um, there is, oh, another book that I won't read by the end of the year. I know it's three, but I'm just going to say four because it works for this prompt as well. Uh, Premonitions at Withers Farm by Jamie Jo Wright. This is one I'm on hold. I finally got a hold of the audiobook. I have found all of her other books on audio, but not that one. I'm just like, ah, it's the one I'm the most excited for. Like the most excited for. So I should get it on audio by the end of the year. I want to read that. That one is, it's Christian fiction, historical, dual timeline. If you guys know Jamie Jo Wright, she writes spooky Christian ghost-like stories. And this one is about a haunted farm. And if you all know me, I am obsessed with farms. I am a country girl at heart. I want to live on a farm. <laughs> so I'm so excited for this one. Uh, so that one definitely could I'm, I'm like hoping, I'm hoping that one's as good as I think it's going to be. And it takes the cake as the best. Um, other than that, maybe an Owl Crate book. I do get Owl Crate. I'm waiting on November, December. 
I only have two months left to go. Uh, I read another Owl Crate book last month that actually was amazing and is in my top, is in the running for top of the year, best of the year, called um, After the Forest by Kel Woods. So it's possible there could be an Owl Crate book that comes because I obviously don't know what they are. That shocks me, but I doubt it, <laughs> to be 100% honest. Um, yeah, so those are kind of my options for maybe, um, but that's the only thing I can like realistically think of that I could actually see really being, you know, a favorite. Okay, and the last prompt, we're finally there. The last question, I mean, question number six, have you already started making plans for next year? No, no, I am not someone who plans a whole lot ahead. I should be, I really should be, <laughs> but yeah, no, um, a lot of it honestly has to do with my health. My health is so unpredictable that it's di very difficult for me to make plans for the future because I never know how I'm going to be feeling. But as far as like, books I want to read that year or do I have any specific video projects that I want to work on throughout the year or anything like that no I kind of have some ideas like I definitely kind of want to carry over some stuff that I've done this year or that I wanted to do this year didn't happen maybe do it next year you know do like a 24 and 24 and different things like that um but I don't have anything actually written out planned out I do plan on though over the next few days making plans for that so we'll see how that goes. But as of this current moment, no. I am, don't even have plans for December. I'm like, it just, just I need to get through today, you know? <laughs> just let me get through today, okay? So yeah, guys, that is it. That is my um, end of year book tag. Let me know your thoughts, uh, your answers. If you have a video or have a channel and want to do this, you are tagged. If not, leave your answers in the comments down below. Let me know, do you guys have planned out next year? I know some people have like the entirety of next year already scheduled. I'm just like, how? How do you do that? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's all I got to say. Leave comments, likes, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm hoping to get my computer fixed ASAP so that, you know, I can get back to editing um, the videos the way I prefer to edit my videos. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.